just being true to yourself, really. Like, I don't know how you can be honest to other people when you can't be honest with yourself. Like, are you living your honest. truth? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs>'cause that's the only way to like get to your goal or do whatever like you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you find those conversations that you had about the same word? Was it the same sort of takeaways or No, they all had different Yeah, they all had different takeaways. Like um Joey Gambello was more saying that like the he uses consistency as like motivation when he can't find motivation. He's Mm -hmm. like if you just keep consistent with that one thing that you're trying to get better at, that will ultimately motivate you to like keep doing that thing instead right but it's using consistency in placeholder of like it's a motivation for you Mm -hmm. to there's something about the word motivation where it feels fleeting oh yeah do you know oh i think so like social media has kind of done that yeah i think just coming from you know i guess that marketing background especially working in social media you know we would try to think of different hashtags for each day just to like create content and you know in all of my jobs they've said oh how about like motivation monday they kind of just like throw that out there i think they're like doing something so special and like inspiring people but it's just it's just more like corporate jibber-jabber essentially yeah but i don't think they're really considering i don't know the word motivation like how different people can interpret that or what kind of message yeah this corporation wants to send with yeah and you know the thing about motivation (laughs) is like no one who actually needs to be motivated Mm -hmm. sees that and goes like i'm gonna do that like thanks inspirational poster yeah like it's it's only ever people who like are already interested in like getting jacked up about what they're doing that consume motivational content Mm -hmm. You know, like they need that like kind of like hit of, you know, David Goggins. I don't know if you know who David Goggins is. Mm -hmm. He's like an ex-Navy SEAL and he was like used to be like really overweight and like Mm -hmm. hated his life and everything. And then he turned around by just like 
he essentially like bullies himself into working out like Mm -hmm. he's like i don't care if i'm tired like i put the damn shoes on i go run like you know my feet are bleeding like i I do i go run he's become like a mini like motivational celebrity but the interesting thing with him is he's not kind of like resting on his laurels or just being like an orator of motivation he's like in the bc wildfires like helping like being a volunteer firefighter oh and like you know what i mean like he's just doing like because it's a physical activity not because like he wants to be a firefighter i'm sure part of him like enjoys saving people like he was with the navy seals Mm -hmm. but it's interesting like cats like that that just that's their (laughs) that's their thing like that's what they chose to be online cats like that (laughs) it's these sayings that you have (laughs) that i've never heard of before what are some of the other (laughs) sayings that i've said that you're like what oh I can't think of any <laughs> off the top of my head to be. <laughs> It'll come to you. It'll come to you. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know how much you want to like explore into your background because like a lot of people I'll start talking to them about like, you know, what they're interested in and like how they discovered that and and you know mm. kind of like the moment that made them want to do, you know, comedy is an example, right? Mm. So for you because you're particularly a private person that's why i appreciate you even wanting to sit down and do this you're purely doing this out of love and (laughs) i i can't be more grateful for that Mm -hmm. so like what kind of topics are you more open to exploring on the podcast like yoga dance (laughs) (laughs) marketing because you did mention that you did marketing a lot of social media. I'd rather delve into something that, you know, that I have interests. Yes. You know. That's what I'm talking about. In probably in the realm of health. Health? And okay. well-being. And, All right. You know, hashtag self-care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, with your your yoga routine has been like an especially uh, gone from especially humbling experience to now like you're at this place where you have like a a beautiful like yoga studio and a good instructor that you can like go to and work on mm-hmm. your practice. But like, how has like what? Tell me that moment of deciding that you're gonna put on like a yoga video on YouTube in this like little space and then just try to like make it work. Cause I think it's the making it work aspect really like tells me a lot about a person that, Oh, you wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. You had every excuse in the world not to do it. And you found a way to do it. So what was it like doing that basically? Yeah, I was in a very tiny space and I I, I just had to make it work. Uh, why? I don't know. I think I just wanted to try something new. Like I, I always heard of how yoga has these great physical and mental benefits. And I think at the time I just needed some form of escape. Mm. And I thought, okay, maybe I'll try this magical thing. And um, I think I just got my map from like, like my very first map, from like Walmart or something, just like a cheap little thing. Yeah. And the space that I worked in was just big enough for, <laughs> for the map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I just, pulled up apps on my I think at the time it was like an iPhone 4 or something <laughs> and, telling of the time period yeah and just I think I just typed in yoga and and picked like the first app that didn't have you know negative reviews and then I would just learn the most basic poses through that app so I learned you know like mountain pose which is literally just standing <laughs> right <laughs> i love it like but the like, first poses that you learn are just like whatever you could do in that yeah. tiny little space yeah and i think there were little videos on there that were maybe about 
like five minutes or like, you know, like three or five minutes long, seven minutes, and you just do a little flow. And I'm like, I like this. So yeah. Yeah. And I just did that for a while. And then gradually my spaces got bigger and bigger and I was able to do some <laughs> funkier stuff other <laughs> yeah. than mountain pose. But... So. Unfold into more poses. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you see yoga as like, it's a, it's a lifelong thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, anyone at any age can decide to dabble in the world of yoga. You know, like a lot of people have that excuse of, oh, I'm not flexible enough or I have. That's what you do yoga for. Yeah. Like balance or anything like that. Or like, I'm not strong. Um, But no, like any of those things that you complain about, you can work on in yoga and again you, you can start at you start your yoga journey at any age like i remember on instagram the other day there was um, it was like a before and after kind of like progression mm-hmm. series and i think this woman had started her yoga journey at like 39 and then as you swipe through the slide it's like now she's 45 and she's doing like crazy stuff that you wouldn't even imagine right yeah her flexibility had greatly improved and yeah, that's the thing I worry about. Just... I don't know about you folks, but like with age, mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, if I'm cramping now when I bend over to like whatever, get a pot out from a lower <laughs> shelf and I hear my knees crack and I'm like, mm, maybe I should take this yoga thing. Like Yeah, especially hot yoga. Yeah, yeah. Because that the heat it it loosens up your and you've done like non-hot yoga to be able to compare and be like okay hot yoga is clearly the better like yeah it's loosening up the muscles yeah because it also um i guess it depends on your intentions your goals so usually yin you know that's a, a type of yoga where it's more so focused on its patience really and it's funny, my yoga teacher says that the most impatient people are the ones who should practice yin. Yeah, yeah. Because you're holding, in the traditional yin, like you're holding poses for about like four or 12 minutes at a time. 12 minutes? Like, <laughs> oh my God. But, you know, the class that I go to, we're holding poses for about like three, four minutes, and then we move on to the next one. But yeah, it's really it's more restorative Mm -hmm. so after you know an intense day or a stressful day or even just practicing another form of yoga like vinyasa which is more of a flow Mm -hmm. it's like pose after pose um through each breath going into a yin session would just kind of be like a reset and yeah you can practice that like in heat or not in heat i think any form of yoga really but it's more Mm -hmm. more so like traditionally done without heat because you know you can lay there with like essential oils and like bolster pillows or whatever or you know just (laughs) just you know you can you can lay there in um various poses that don't require a lot of i guess effort Mm -hmm as opposed to other forms of yoga but um usually vinyasa or hatha which is another type of yoga that's you can you can do that in in like more hot settings but no i digress (laughs) i digress yeah (laughs) no i love that so much and like it's it's great to like see someone be passionate about something that is ultimately like a betterment for your health. Like there's so many other things that you could be passionate about that are just like wearing away at your happiness, essentially. Mm-hmm. Like think about the amount of people who are like, I'm an influencer and I'm obsessed with being an influencer. And every moment in my life has to be like captured and like shared and sounds exhausting it's exhausting yeah they need a yin session (laughs) like we saw so we went to latin sparks festival Mm -hmm. um shout out latin sparks for having us this is very kind um but on the way was it on the way there or on the way back that we saw the those like people filming like a tiktok video 
Oh, I think that was um, on the way there. On the way there. Yeah, it was on the way there. <laughs> so in <laughs> Ottawa, there's like this area that has a bunch of museums set up. And uh, one of them is like, I think it's just a monument, but it's like the Holocaust yeah. Memorial Monument. And it's just like this interesting shaped like building i don't even how do you even describe it like architectural art i don't know it looked like something like i don't know it was like a brutalist design good word no that like, yeah that's, yeah yeah, yeah. That's i know i'm just saying yeah. good word for like yeah it's brutalism it's a brutalist just design a big stone and those thing. women were being brutal to the sanctity of that space <laughs> they're literally like in an alleyway of this like design and they're just shooting tiktok videos <laughs> i mean like fuck. <laughs> and they were calling over their one friend yeah yeah, yeah. the girl walking come take like this with us yeah. <laughs> and they were so lighthearted about it so crazy i think i i genuinely think they just had no idea where oh for sure that which to me is the funnier version yeah. it's like not funny if they know that it's a holocaust memorial and they're doing tiktok dances it's so funny if they don't know and then they find out after they walk away. Yeah. Because like we were saying like, they'd be like <laughs> Tiffany, delete that video. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> they realize it's a Holocaust memorial as they're leaving is such a funnier ending to that story. Yeah. I really hope that's what happened. I, I think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I actually tell a story. I'm like, you were an eyewitness to that story of another mm -hmm. like thing that really makes me cringe is um influencer families yeah we were at hogsback park and you were there we heard a little girl shrieking screaming mm -hmm. we were like what's happening there's like clearly something like an emergency or something is going wrong and then we see that like a dad is like filming them and he's doing some weird like brother and sister fight over a toy sketch or something were they like behind these trees too yeah they were like, like weirdly were behind some trees far away from everyone else and just because i think at first we were concerned about of the course. children's safety because there's this little girl screaming and this man yeah just like he's just standing there yelling at her <laughs> you're like what the fuck oh that's the director yeah, 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 yeah. So that was concerning that was very concerning yeah yeah but this is like it's it's crazy that we have to like even think about that kind of stuff now mm -hmm. like that there are people out there who are just doing this all over the place and they're all trying to get super famous yeah and like those kids aren't like at least if they were in hollywood hollywood is not a good place for a child either nope but at least they have like some laws in place so that like to somewhat protect them. somewhat the best they can protect yeah. the child and more importantly protect that child's money like it's supposed to stay in like a trust until they're 18 or something mm -hmm. because uh back in the day parents would just like spend every dollar that their kid made on these movies right and then the kid's like what the fuck happened to all my money yeah I'm like oh well we bought houses and we went on vacations we bought nice cars it's gone right yeah. not even any money for college and now you're this like child actor who's broke because your parents suck away all your money. That has happened a billion times. But these like influencer kids, like it's going to be crazy when they start like suing their parents yeah. for years of them being filmed and tortured on camera and they didn't see a dime. Mm -hmm. Nor did they consent to any. Nor did they, yeah, nor did they even consent to like coming out of the womb, you're filming them for your vlog or whatever. Sick. That's crazy. <laughs> Start a parenting podcast. <laughs> For the two of you, just give tips. You know? Fucking hell. These are interesting times. I understand why you want to be like a more private person because like, who the hell... Like what you were saying was like powerful shit yeah. about... Well, you showed me that video and then you were kind of explaining the the Instagram creepiness yeah yeah where it's, it's like a creepy place people view <laughs> your story and then they don't engage with anything you're like uh, i don't know how i feel about that mm -hmm. i was kind of looking at it as like if you because my perspective on everything is like i don't care what people think yeah all because i read the subtle art of not giving a fuck and it like 
hit home with me. It's funny because I didn't really like that book. Really? There are just too many F bombs. That's the point of the book. That's that, the was, the book. that was the takeaway. Yeah, just yeah. F after every other word. You hear that, Mark Manson? I wasn't a fan. Slow down on the Fs. <laughs> he is like one of those people that tries to just be like, I bet he's tried to get his points across nicely and people don't listen. So he's like, what do I care then? Let me just be as abrasive as possible and hope that they pay attention to what I'm saying. Yeah, it did the opposite in my oh, case. No. Turned you away. That can happen too, though. Yeah. You should reread it. Maybe I'll, I'll take a marker and I'll block out all the Fs. <laughs> <laughs> the censored version. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the censored. That would, that's what he should do is put out <laughs> the censored version of it with little asterisks instead of the fucking, like, finally. So. Yeah reading i can get done <laughs> i don't know i don't i feel like maybe he was trying too hard to be so. all edgy and uh, maybe edgy. maybe it was like cool at the time of being released yeah because i heard him tell a story about how like the publishers were like you can't put like fuck on the cover of a book <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> Settle art of not giving a fuck. You can't have F U C K. Yeah. And he's like, okay, well, what if I do like a bright orange book that like can't be missed? Mm -hmm. And then just I'll asterisk the. I think it was like you. Uh, yeah. 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 And pff, I mean, it works. Like he sold a lot of copies of that book. It's the other thing too mm -hmm. is uh, we share a love for books. Yeah. With a lot of books. I like that's good. Yeah, that's right. good. We have books on books on books. It's weird when you go into someone's house. We've started. To <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And the then we're like, halfway. Yeah, and then we're like, oh, I like this book. And then we get it and we start it. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just. We have just an obsession with owning books. We don't read them. <laughs> we, read, we read about 5 to 10% of the book. 5 to 10%. Until another book catches our eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what what's the last book you finished? Um. <laughs> the last book I finished was the 10x rule. No, that's a lie. Wait, the Rust, it was book. Rust book. Yeah, the Rust yeah. book that you got me. You, you can put that one down. That book was so good. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It was just like I think I've been like uh like really getting into his music and stuff lately. And then like I heard him on Jay Shetty's podcast. Okay. That's a great podcast that you should listen to. Mm -hmm. There's just something like and what's crazy, I think he's like 29. Oh. But he speaks like an elder. Like okay. he speaks like somebody who worked through their traumatic bullshit early, early on. Mm -hmm. And like Black Zeus, who I had on as a uh, guest as well, like he, I get the same vibe from him that like, mm -hmm. oh, you've like, you've worked through your trauma at like 19, 20, 21. You know what I mean? Like so early on. I feel like I didn't even do that until like mid 20s, late 20s, you know? And even now, I'm still trying to unravel stuff and figure myself out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's some people that just like have completely focused on unpackaging all their childhood trauma. They're just wise beyond their years. Yeah. yeah. It's such an interesting type type of person. What was the last book that you finished? It was the Jeanette McCurdy one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, messed up title. I'm glad my mom died. Yeah. But... She got a lot of pushback for that, but she's like, it's my mom. What do you like? What do you care? Yeah, but um that book was an emotional roller coaster for me. Like I'd be laughing one minute, crying the next, and then I'm shocked the next moment. Like some things that she describes in that book, I'm like, oh my god. Like, like what? Just... I mean, I wouldn't want to like spoil it for people, but oh no, spoil it. If you haven't read spoiler. it, turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There, it's not. Um, she talked about her showers and how, you know, her mom would just like <laughs> basically assess her body and check for things. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was just a very invasive experience for her because she was maybe about like at this one until she was maybe about like 15 or so. Damn. Yeah, like she just never had privacy in the shower because her mom would just be in there feeling this and touching that, That's checking wild. like yeah. So just you know the details that she would share. You're like, oh god. I'm glad her mom died. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> if she's glad, I can be glad. <laughs> yeah, but uh That's fucked up. Yeah. A lot of what her mom did was 
It's pretty messed up. So. Yeah. And it's crazy that like all of, I'm sure she would have been like fucked up if her kid wasn't in entertainment or not, mm-hmm. but like that certainly didn't help. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that her kid was such like a kind of rising actor in like all these like Nickelodeon shows mm-hmm. and like Disney and stuff. It's like the mom's thinking like, oh, I hit the lottery here. I need mm-hmm. to make sure my product looks right. Like she looks at her child as like a product that she can make money off mm-hmm. of basically, which just only probably polluted her mind even further of like abusing her and, and not even just abusing her, but like justifying that abuse too, yeah. right? that's the craziest thing yeah because it would be framed as like oh this is for your career it's for the Mm -hmm. this is good for you you know like she would always dictate like what Jeanette would eat or Mm -hmm. not eat you know and she was always watching her weight like there were constant weigh-ins and it's messed up because you know while her mom was you know sick with cancer and she's in the hospital bed and Jeanette whispered into her ear, she's like, Mom, I'm finally 96 pounds or something like that. Like the goal weight. Oh my God. And I was like, oh my God. Like it's hoping that would like pick her up. Yeah. Like, oh man. Yeah. Very toxic. Yeah, for real. Very, very Speaking toxic. of toxic, what do you think is going on with Britney Spears? Give me your conspiracy theories because you binge <laughs> this content constantly. Yes, I know you can segue. I know you can talk about Britney Spears. It was a good segue. You have to acknowledge that it was a good segue. Hey, can you keep that? Um, what is going on with Britney? What do you think is going on? What do I think is going on with Britney? Because I think she's a clone and she's on an island somewhere. You think so? <laughs> they got her hooked up to a machine and her brain is just producing hit after hit after hit and they're just making other little pop star singer songs i genuinely think she's just that far gone yeah eh? because of all the crazy meds that they put her on for yeah at least 13 years that we know right Mm -hmm. yeah true could have even been before that and it's just not public knowledge yeah so because like think about it like that that's going to permanently alter your brain chemistry and people are like that's not Britney that's not the same Brit. well obviously it isn't no like, yeah she's been through some shit yeah so yeah it's just the wildest thing that like forever everybody was like free Britney yeah. free Britney for like a year maybe two years straight people just wouldn't stop like saying that she needs to be freed from this conservatorship and then when she got out she took it a little too literally and she, she freed like, herself of clothes she going, yeah she oh, freed she... herself of clothes she was just showing her titties like every time she pops <laughs> on my feet i send it to you immediately because i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> like i wish i had videos queued up that we could react to because like that would be fucking priceless oh my god just reacting to like all of her latest videos because she turned comments off which is public discourse i mean part of the you know part of the i don't want to say entertainment but entertainment she's an entertainer yeah <laughs> so um, reading the comments is i guess to read more of the conspiracy theories that are out True. there or, oh know. my god i don't know but then um <laughs> there'd be other people just like celebrating it they're like you better work <laughs> yeah that's the right <laughs> that's the crazy thing is the people who are like yes <laughs> supporting <laughs> this is the Britney I remember. Yes. No, no, it is not. That Britney left the cuckoo's nest a long time ago. Yeah. I just keep thinking like when I see your content, I'm like, that's someone's mom. Yeah. Like imagine like, Oh my God. She has two teenage sons. Oh. So think of like when you were in high school. Oh my God. No. Your classmate's mom just like spinning like a top. (laughs) Just and you could be like, is this your mom, dude? Like, it's that accessible. Like, you could just type in BR and it would come right up and you'd be like, yeah. this is your mother. Like, that's humiliating. You know? That's crazy. Like, somebody out there has, like, a mom that's a porn star. Oh, yeah. Like, that's wild. Or dad that's a porn star. Mm-hmm. Or a grandmother that's a porn star. There is definitely granny porn and their family does not talk to them for (laughs) sure there's no way you can't be making apple pies and taking cream pies there's no way (laughs) 
you have that one ready <laughs> no i honestly man i'm playing 3d chess in my head and as i was as i was setting it up i was like there it is oh my god <laughs> I, that's not proven mm -hmm. yeah i improv the best with you that's also like part of my um uh, what's it called selfishness of this podcast mm -hmm. it's recording genius improv the best of the best. The best of the recording best. Recording your comedy album. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is just my comedy album. This is me talking to my girlfriend for an hour. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Any word come to mind? Honestly, no. I. <laughs> That's what is I honesty. Know. Yeah, honesty. Yeah. That's the word. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> honesty what does honesty mean to you what does honesty mean to me just being true to yourself really like I don't know how you can be honest to other people when you can't be honest with yourself like are you living your Gosh. truth <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> If we had um, what's that called? Like a a sound. I need a soundboard. A, a soundboard. You this. would have that little like. Yeah, like that. <laughs> what's his face from Superstore? What that, where he always makes that. Cheyenne. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What's his name again. Bo. Bo. Right? Bo. Yeah, yeah. But it's Johnny Pemberton. Is yeah. like that. Yeah, actor. You need that whatever yeah. sound. He makes. I just clip that sound from the or show. Clip that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But, um, okay next next that's, that's what you would use before episode 200 i'm gonna have a soundboard that i can just hit in mid conversation <laughs> for all my witty remarks yeah <laughs> but um yeah like honesty is i think at its core is just being your truest self mm -hmm. just, yeah and the best part about being honest like all the time is for me at least mm -hmm. it kind of goes back to that like not caring what other people think yeah because i think a lot of times when people like lie about stuff it's because you care too much about what other people think mm -hmm. but if you were just honest all the time honesty is cool because it inherently has an air of you don't care what the person is going to think mm -hmm. to an extent obviously right i was like, going to say you can be too honest. you can be too honest for and sure feeling. but it's like yeah everything conversation wise is obviously like very nuanced but i mean like being honest to yourself is like super important because if you are just creating this mask that you like present this is all half the reason i started this podcast is because i just want to talk normally on camera mm -hmm. which is me being honest about imperfections or like mm -hmm. you know whatever right but doing that, I think, is, like, so much better because with a lie, there's just so much to keep up. It's like your method acting. That must be exhausting. Exhausting. But then there are people, I guess, like, pathological liars. They True. Lie they enjoy so it. So much that they start to believe the I lies too. that they tell. Like that guy That's on my scary. Facebook. Oh, bless his heart. <laughs> bless his heart, indeed. It's sad. That's there's really a guy sad. on my Facebook. Not going to name him. Yeah, don't. Not going to name, no name Don't worry about it. But there's this dude <laughs> and he's lying a thousand percent. It does not make any sense. Mm -hmm. The things that he talks about on his day to day. And every time I see it, I just go like, that sucks. Like that sucks. They just do anything else, you know, do like fucking Pick up wood carving, like, <laughs> I don't know, paint something, like, go for a walk, go fishing, like, what do you, like, what, and again, it's that social media draw of, like, I need something to tell all my friends or whatever that I'm, like, I gotta appear that I'm up to something cool, yeah. right? Yeah. Instead of just, just don't post it. Yeah. Like, you know, if somebody hasn't posted on their Facebook for five years, I don't think that they're not doing anything. I think the opposite. I think, okay, they're just, they have a life. They must be doing so much that they can't even post they're on here. Busy. <laughs> That's so true. Although there are some people on my Facebook that have not been active for a concerning, a concerning amount, a, of, time? amount of time. Yeah, no. you start to get worried. Or at least I do. And I'm like, are they okay? And then I check their profile. And I'm like, last post, 2007. I don't know. Because 
it's you know, they're you laughing, see, like happy to be on Facebook. You still see people's birthdays and people will still post mm. like happy birthday. I'm like, I don't see any birthday wishes. So then I'm like, are they alive? Oh wow. That got dark. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you know? I don't, I don't know. And how would you know? Like there's some <laughs> there's some people where it's like they have like um like a recorded death where their Facebook becomes like an immemorium page essentially but right that's like it gets that's changed aesthetic. yeah yeah right but it's something that like the the so like when you sign up for facebook there's a setting where you can like put in the event of my demise my facebook goes to this person mm -hmm. so like their facebook suddenly has control like a page right. of your facebook yeah and they can just decide to leave it the way it is or delete, delete it, it yeah. or make it in memorial whatever i guess your wish was mm -hmm. you know i think it's kind of cool though to have like a virtual in memoriam wall where people can kind of like visit it and like go through your photos and like that's kind of like that's kind of awesome like that yeah. that's never existed before like if someone passed away all you would have is whatever photos were taken of them in maybe an old dusty album that you'd have to dig out from a basement like that's yeah kind of so cool like, is it any different yeah i don't know like you just it's pull just up your like phone album, yeah guess. but it's something that they've curated their entire life yeah right like everything that they put on there is like for eventually this in memoriam like album wall mm -hmm. very morbid turn to the the podcast oh, but yeah. i mean that's where we go yeah well <laughs> ooh back to the topic yes do you remember honesty box on facebook that honesty was box people were honest and yeah. that <laughs> ruthless no that honesty box doesn't really exist anymore well yeah because it was just so <laughs> it's toxic mm. at, at least <laughs> from my experience no people were a little too honest no or people put in the honesty box um grinding your gears someone said that i pretended to be drunk at my prom after party. Oh, that's so specific. <laughs> Which is complete lies and fiction. I was wasted. <laughs> I I felt funny. Oh, okay. Because I had I had one screwdriver. Uh huh. Next to no drinking experience, of course I'm gonna be buzzed. Of course. So I guess someone was watching me when I was crazy. Like, yeah, and they're like, mm, she's faking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah high school sucks so stupid. Kind of stupid like why why would i pretend to be drunk yeah like what, what is the benefit in that like oh look at me i'm so cool i'm inebriated like yeah. i can't stand it's like no like to this day i'm an insane like lightweight mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah God. obviously a screwdriver at like what how old are you in, in prom like 18 obviously that's gonna yeah and again i had like no drinking experience and you probably that, didn't eat much that day either yeah like before that i had had a glass of champagne or even not even a full glass at like a birthday party the year before that's all i had so who was pretending to be drunk i think i was <laughs> <laughs> you like know? an honesty box was like uh-uh so i don't know maybe it's remember they had like yeah. notes too like people could like write like oh, I loved Facebook no you love Facebook no I was writing poems ah and I liked it. I I felt like that was the way to express myself mm -hmm. I was honest you're honest in your Facebook oh, notes yeah maybe a little too honest oh, no. <laughs> okay. yeah it's yeah. funny like these little features that like came and went yeah and just like oh, how come that didn't become like a th I mean I guess Instagram they tried to bring it back. Yeah, the no. note section, like the message, there's, it doesn't even appear I for me. Not. There's one person on my Instagram who uses it, just one. That's wild. Yeah. It's like threads. Like everybody used it for like a day and I remember, like, oh. yeah. It's not a something that we need, I guess. Because it's it's Twitter. Yeah, it's just it's just boring Twitter. It's boring Twitter. Yeah. Twitter is exciting. <laughs> yeah, you go to Twitter and you see fights like you go to twitter and it's fucking on fire and if it's a viral fight you'll see like someone promoting like a vibrant yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah the replies are just so unhinged like it was like buy this galaxy lamp because i wrote a tweet about whatever how biden sucks yeah. oh my god <laughs> where i posted some like fight video twitter you can literally like 
see people die like it's 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 what do you mean it i've i've been watching like videos in my feed and i'm like oh that person died for sure did i just see like on twitter like what the fuck they don't censor anything they don't censor shit. like i've seen like straight up <laughs> pornography on twitter yeah yeah a thousand percent sign up for their whole accounts and yeah they're not even you're not even following them it just shows up in your feed yeah, like like, I like this i didn't interact with anything remotely close to that yeah uh, fuck. twitter's unhinged and yeah threads is basically the boring twitter yeah it's like corporate twitter yeah. that is so accurate <laughs> yeah. it's corporate twitter but i don't know i feel like there's just too many social media apps mm -hmm. well that's just my opinion we don't need all of this and it's all the same thing yeah because they all copy each other it's all 100 percent exactly the same thing yeah so why do i have to remember all these passwords for what's the same thing yeah i wonder how long we go i don't know oh nice perfect what? um oh well, we're good we're like close to close to the end oh that's good that's perfect for me to check and we're like if time flew by that's amazing we can look back at it all um there's one thing you know the question i ask every guest this question you don't know the question i'll tell you the question so the question is is if you can make a phone call to 15 year old kimberly and give her a piece of advice based on what you know now knowing it won't affect your current timeline so you can't be giving fucking lottery advice or <laughs> I buy bitcoin you know what i mean yeah. like buy bitcoin or anything like that but like what would you what would you tell a 15 year old version of yourself knowing what you know now <laughs> Ooh, that's you take your time to think about it you don't have to that's rush an answer what would i tell my 15 year old self what's funny is that i barely remember 15 like, it wasn't a very significant age for me. Like, I feel like it was just so uneventful. Okay. <laughs> but let's see. I think I kind of have to, like, think about where I was at mm -hmm. that time. All I remember is, like, sitting in English class watching, I think it was um, the Leonardo DiCaprio and what is her name? Claire Danes, that version of Romeo and Juliet. Oh yeah, that's all I remember. Just watching that in wow. grade ten English class. That is my memory of age fifteen. Like, not much <laughs> that's happened. That's wild. Then, um, when I tell my fifteen-year-old self. So you're in that classroom. You're watching that movie, and the teacher goes like, "Kim, there's a call for you." And it's it's you now. now. Oh my god. And she's like, "What?" Um, <laughs> I would say you. Pale yellow is not your color. <laughs> <laughs> not pale yellow is not your color, no. <laughs> <laughs> the best advice I've ever heard. <laughs> because I, okay, my other memory of when I was 15 was that I think I, it's in my, um, my school photo, and that's why. So that image is like flashing. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was wearing, um, <laughs> Do you remember when girls would wear those really like cropped hoodies or those little shrugs, the little crochet ones? It's just like maybe it looks like oh a, yeah, it's like a, a little, tiny little yeah, like crochet tiny thing. Little crochet yeah, thing yeah, yeah. With like the long tank tops with the lace. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. 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 So I had a tiny like hoodie and that was pale yellow. <laughs> and I was like <laughs> looking back on that, why did I wear that? I wore it all the time. So funny. But it was not my color. It just washed me out. Honestly, it's it's sad, but I would just give myself fashion advice. <laughs> there are some questionable things. Like, oh, also, don't wear sugar boots to school. Sugar? Oh, stripper boots. Yeah. I think it's said sugar boots. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck are sugar boots? <laughs> no, it's stripper boots. <laughs> stripper boots. Yeah, because you got... I, I, yeah. Yeah, explain that story. Uh, I... <laughs> 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 I got these boots from i believe it was a salvation army okay i just i <laughs> went there and i was like oh these boots are great because i wanted to like 
I don't know. I think I just wanted to up my. Yeah, you're like this is gonna up my fashion. My fashion game. <laughs> so they were they were hideous. They were like really. I think they were made for like wide calves, which yeah, I don't know. No. So I was pretty much swimming in these boots, and um, they were like quilted, so yeah. like quilted leather, with I think the heel was like four inches. So imagine me wearing four inch heels to high school. <laughs> like four inch like stripper boots and they were like over the knee no not over the, knee. over the knee did you put like jeans on over them or something no no i talked about jeans then talk about jeans but they weren't the skinny jeans so it was like bulky no <laughs> <laughs> you you have baggy jeans tucked in the stripper boots yeah nice and i really thought this is it like, I'm, like I'm, i made it i'm killing it <laughs> I'm fucking for sure winning prom queen. <laughs> <laughs> Which was rigged at my high school. Button. It was rigged? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. How was it rigged? It was rigged. Um, uh, conspiracy theory. Well, it was one of the girls that was on the prom committee. Oh, yeah, of course. She won. Made herself queen. Yeah. But then I learned <laughs> that everyone had crime. actually voted for another girl. Oh, my God. I think it was the girl who was, um, she was on student council, but not on the prom committee. So the girl who actually won prom queen, she was a student council girl. Ooh. So there's drama in the the clubs. Clearly. Yeah. When is there not drama in high school? High school bullshit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that was... <laughs> Don't wear tail yellow is your advice to your i know you expected something much deeper no no i expect what i don't expect Mm -hmm. anything that's that's the number one rule going into that question is because like people have different approaches to it where like they uh they're like what is this question Mm -hmm. some people are like really blown away by it and they try to go super deep some people like just advice like that like stuff that you wouldn't even think of Mm -hmm. but i love that because it's just so unique to each person i was just being honest yeah (laughs) hey full circle (laughs) that's the show everybody um kim do you want them to follow you on anything Mm -hmm. i can put links or i can not put links they can come find you honestly no (laughs) don't follow don't follow her on anything she's not promoting anything she's not she doesn't have a new album coming out. No comedy special. She's just my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Not just. It's. I it made it sound like honestly. Small. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kimberly, for being brave enough to step onto the podcast and the first in-house podcast. I'm working on the background. Leave me alone, Buzu. He's a uh, number one fan, Buzu. <laughs> I know them by name. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Subscribe, hit like, all that shit. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> You've been listening to the Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs>